We're looking at a live picture from Gibbs Sprawl Road on the northeast side of town where a deadly incident is unfolding. So here's the thing. We don't know much at this hour. We're still working to learn exactly what happened here tonight. But police are telling us that one man is dead as a result of an incident that happened here. Stay with us on air and online for updates on this story as always. And we also have more breaking news tonight. Another arrest has been made in connection to that deadly dog attack in a West Side neighborhood. We reported last night that San Antonio police had opened up an investigation into threats and intimidation of neighbors who witnessed that attack. Some of them talked to KSAT on camera. We've learned a third person is in custody tonight, and that person has been charged with retaliation. Take a look at your screen. This is 26 year old Destiny Cor Cardona. According to Bear County records, she was arrested for retaliation. So that's a third degree felony. Details are still limited as to what exactly led to her arrest. But we do know that the investigation into threats against neighbors ranged from fireworks and graffiti to a death threat. Now, again, police aren't confirming that this arrest is in connection to those threats. But again, retaliation is the charge. We know that Destiny Cardona is being held on a $25,000 bond. Now about that attack, it happened on February 24th. An elderly man attacked by dogs on a sidewalk on Depla Street. He ultimately died. The dog's owners, Christian Alexander Moreno and 30, 31, and his wife, Abilene Schneider, also 31, arrested and charged with attack by dangerous dog, resulting in death and injury to an elderly person. They are still in jail tonight. Now we're going to bring you more information on this story as it comes into our newsroom. So stay tuned for that. In other news tonight, safety versus convenience. That is the argument that's dividing neighbors in Northwest Bear County. Yeah, we're talking about traffic trouble here. People living in Davis Ranch have regularly used Beverly Hills Drive to get to FM 1560. But the city of Holotus is putting a price on using Beverly Hills as a thoroughfare now. The night team's John Paul Barajas explains the city solution to those traffic issues. Traffic in San Antonio is bad enough, and now we're being limited on our roads that we can use. Christina Atwood lives in Davis Ranch, a newly developed community just outside of Hello to City Limits, a busy area with a lot of traffic. I could get home at around 5 o'clock, and now sometimes it pushes even 6, depending. Beverly Hills Drive is a popular thoroughfare for Davis Ranch residents, but those living along the Hello to City streets say the additional traffic is too much for their neighborhood. Just taking a walk in the neighborhood or walking their dogs, uh, or kids riding their bikes, uh, that's not possible anymore with this amount of traffic. It's dangerous. That prompted the city of Halotus to pass a new ordinance. Starting today, drivers who use Beverly Hills Drive as a shortcut could face fines starting at $250. Hello to Mayor Rich Whitehead says it's about more than just safety. The uh, road usually handles a thousand cars per day. Just in the past few months, that has gone from a thousand a day to eighteen hundred a day. So that extra eight hundred cars a day, it is tearing up our roads. The mayor blames the traffic on a lack of planning with Bear County officials before Davis Ranch was built. Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says legally the county can't fight the ordinance. We're going to just reach out to the folks here at the city, see if there's some way we can we can work together on uh, minimizing the amount of traffic, but not necessarily penalizing folks. All of it coming as a surprise to Atwood. That was actually one of um, the selling points for those houses back there was the quick access to 1560 and 1604. I'm not sure if I would have bought here if I had known that. Now, we have reached out to a handful of developers for Davis Ranch, but it was after business hours, so we have not heard back. As for the no through traffic ordinance, County Commissioner Rodriguez says to adhere by the rules for the time being, he and the mayor are scheduled to meet tomorrow to find another possible solution. In Northwest Bear County, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Growing pains. Thank you, John Paul. Well, new on the night beat, a man is fighting for his life right now after he was run over by a truck. Happened a little after 4.30 this afternoon on Northwest 36th Street that's on the west side of town. It's where officers say they found the man in his 20s with a head wound. He may have also had a broken jaw. He is in the hospital right now in critical condition. Police say they did have a suspect who was in a Ford F-150. We're going to bring you updates on this story as soon as we get new information. Now a scary scene playing out at a local high school. Brennan High School on Cottonwood Way in the north side was on lockdown today after reports of someone outside the school carrying a weapon. Now to be clear, 
Nobody was hurt. The suspect isn't a student. The campus was on lockdown for 15 minutes when Northside ISD police received reports of a stranger on school grounds. An ISD police eventually caught that person and then found a weapon inside their backpack. And now that person is facing criminal charges. In a statement, Brennan principal Dr. John Trimble said, quote, we take all potential threats to our campus seriously. We would like to continuously stress the very important message to our students, staff and families. If you see something, say something. End quote. All right, want to get you an update on tonight's storm chance that we were talking about earlier in the day as we see a cold front move into south central Texas. That storm chance has been lowered for a good portion of the area. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has taken the central portions of our region out of that low end one out of five risk for maybe an isolated strong to severe storm to pop up before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. Still included, though, our far western counties closer to the Rio Grande, so we may need to monitor for a decaying strong storm storm to move into that part of the area again before sunrise tomorrow. As of right now, we are quiet out there. Just a little bit of radar noise closer to the radar site and here in San Antonio. Again, just a few isolated showers currently looks to be possible through the overnight and by the time we're waking up and stepping out for the Friday morning drive. So we'll get you a full look at the latest version of what the radar could look like here over the next several hours as well as temperatures, what they're going to do over the next several days coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Well, as it starts to get warmer outside, some people may be wondering, will my power hold up? What's up with the grid? Well, the Elect Electric Reliability Council of Texas say it's ready for the heat. Today, ERCOT released a report detailing its plan to keep up with typical spring conditions, assuring Texans the grid will be able to play its part. Meanwhile, Texas senators announced their plans today for continuing to strengthen the state's power grid. These proposals come two years after that winter storm that caused millions to go without power in frigid temperatures, killed more than 200 people. You could read more about the Senate bills right now on KSAT.com. A disabled veteran left stranded in the middle of the night by a towing company. The Army vet parked in a handicapped spot like he has many times before. He has a handicap license plate, but this time he returned to find his car gone. And here's the other thing. He couldn't walk home because, as we said, he's disabled. So he called KSAT for help. He wanted to know why his car was towed. The night team's Patty Santos got the answers, but the veteran still doesn't have a car tonight. I'm a disabled vet on a walker, have no way getting home. This is where we found Patrick Winters on Wednesday at 10 p.m., left stranded outside the laundromat with his walker and basket of clean clothes. Because I have stiff person syndrome, which is a very rare autoimmune disease, uh, it's hard for me to walk any distance whatsoever. The 63-year-old Army veteran says he parked his car on the handicapped spot, thinking it would be safe. It also has the distinguished DV on it, which is disabled vet. On my particular one, it has the meritorious medal, which I won in, in the uh, Army when I was uh, in on active duty. He called police thinking it was stolen and later found out a bear crust while's towing was behind the disappearance, but he couldn't get a clear answer on why. To leave a disabled veteran, uh, uh, you know, stuck on the sidewalk on a walker and no way to get home. A San Antonio police officer responded to his initial call about a stolen vehicle and was able to give him a ride home. On Thursday, we attempted to get a clear answer on why his car was towed. Presswells and Vehicle Management Solutions did not respond to our calls or door knock. A quick online search provided a possible answer. Winter's plates had the DV letters on it, but did not have the parking placard or international symbol of access now required in Texas by law since 2022. He would likely be eligible to get one. I do have a active disability that is service connected, and uh, so that's why I do drive with the plate uh, on my car. And Winters was unaware of the law change, but he's still out more than $250 to get his vehicle back. The city of San Antonio Disability Access Office was helpful in getting us an agency that might be able to help Winters get his car back. Tonight, he hopes his story will be a warning to other disabled veterans. Steve, Stephania. Thank you, Patty. By the way, we never did hear from the towing company about right. why they did that. Still head on the night beat. Do you want flies with that? An open door leads to an infestation of flies at this smoothie business. 
It was still open weeks after a health inspection. Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door to find out why. And a big recall warning for parents just ahead why the car seat in your vehicle may put your child in danger. Do you have a dream spring break vacation in mind? If so, you're not alone, but there are some tricks to help make sure you have the perfect getaway. Tomorrow on GMSA, some insider travel knowledge to make sure you are ready to go. Parents, this is for you. The car seat that you may use for your kid is now being recalled. They're being made by Durrell Juvenile Group. The company is recalling more than 59,000 Safety First and Maxi Cozy car seats. The company says that the anchors used to secure the base may actually fail, which would allow the seat to then detach from the car. Not what you want. Now, if you use one of those car seats, Durrell says that it's going to mail you a replacement for free. A business specializing in mini tacos got a big warning from health inspectors recently. Followed the rules or faced continued inspections and fines for repeat violations. The night team's Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door to see what they got wrong and what inspectors found at three other establishments. Mini Tacos Cantorito, located in the 500 block of Southwest Military Drive, got a 75 on their February inspection, a big drop from the 88 they got last October. The inspector found several repeat violations of food handling procedures that were previously explained. Hours old and day old cooked food in a fridge was still too warm. Employees weren't using proper hand washing methods and some weren't washing hands prior to using gloves and changing tasks. They also weren't washing dishes correctly. The inspector ordered a reinspection and warned failure to comply with regulations will result in continued reinspections. <laughs> Tony's Tacos to Go in the 2200 block of Nogalitos got a 79. Refried beans prepared the day before weren't properly cooled. The container of beans was voluntarily discarded. Employees were handling food with bare hands. They were told to stop using to-go bags and can liner bags to store food. They also needed to renew their permit. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> the Texaco Food Mart, located in the 1500 block of New Braunfels, earned an 82. Prepackaged foods in a cooler were too warm. The food was sent back to a vendor. Another refrigerator wasn't cooling. They were told to stop using it. They were improperly packaging their own ice for sale. The only hand sink wasn't working. And they were also missing a food permit. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Smoothie King in the 1200 block of Northeast Loop 410 got an 86. Mangoes were past their use-by date. A kitchen worker wasn't wearing a hairnet while handling food. Several bottles of residential use hot shot were found in the business and there was a significant amount of flies. They were likely coming in through the back door that was propped open. We found that same door still left open this week. A worker told the inspector it jams from the outside. They were told to fix it by April 25th. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, a propped open door and a mop out there. I don't know what would be attracting yeah, the flies. Not, yeah, not exactly something that you want to see. But you know what? Here's the good thing. We do all these stories. There are a lot of restaurants that do do very well. Absolutely. And they're listed also on our website, KSAT.com. So. It's all there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's go <laughs> outside right now. Sky 12, we are expecting... The first of two kind of cool fronts. I, I, the first one's a kind of cool front. The yeah. second one you say is bona fide. Yes, exactly. The second one, we're going to feel more impacts from that when it comes to our temperatures into the beginning of next week. We do have a front that is already inching its way into portions of South Central Texas. Earlier today, we were talking about the potential to find a couple of strong storms develop as that front moves in. That storm chance has been lowered for tonight, but still a few showers to a straight thunder thunderstorm, especially across our far western counties, will still be possible before wake up time tomorrow. And then after we do see that front move in, tomorrow will be somewhat cooler compared to what we saw out there earlier today. Highs in the 70s instead of the 80s. This weekend, though, more temperature swings are in the forecast. Saturday, we're going to see those daytime highs climb into the mid to maybe even upper 80s before we see that second cold front arrive into Sunday morning. And that one will 
pack more of a punch when it comes to some cooler and drier weather into the beginning of next week. So we'll talk all about it. First, detailing that front, you can see that yes, it is approaching the San Antonio area here this 10 p.m. hour, but the better activity and the energy so far associated with this boundary has been well off to our northeast. And you can really see that reflected here in the latest versions of our future cast depicting what the radar could look like through the overnight hours. Really, for the most part now, we're just expecting the possibility for a few isolated to maybe widely scattered showers in between now to when the sun comes up tomorrow morning. You can see, though, by about 7 a.m. tomorrow, a few lingering light showers will be possible in and around the San Antonio area, so some of us might need to use the windshield wipers before we clear things out throughout the remainder of the day. Still, we will monitor to see if we can't find any isolated strong storms develop over northern Mexico, maybe an isolated strong storm surviving the journey into our far western counties generally after about 3 a.m. Don't have a lot of high hopes for that, but it's not completely out of the realm of possibility, so we'll keep eyes on it. Temperature wise, low 70s right now, dew point is 63, so the moisture is still with us here in San Antonio. Overnight tonight, we'll see those thermometers fall into the upper 50s, mainly north of Bear County and up into the hill country by tomorrow morning. I think we'll wake up to temperatures in the low 60s here in San Antonio first thing tomorrow. More of the cloud cover is in store throughout the first half of the day, and then as we start to see that break up, more peaks of sunshine in store, especially by late afternoon. And then those daytime highs for the most part do look to top off in the mid 70s, especially here in Bear County, especially across our far southern and then western counties. We could see those temperatures top off maybe in the upper 70s and low 80s for your Friday afternoon. Really, the moisture is still with us heading into the first half of this upcoming weekend, which means yet again on Saturday, kind of like what we've seen over the past few days, some additional areas of patchy fog will be possible before we clear things out a bit more into the afternoon and temperatures soar into the mid to upper 80s. So well warmer than what we're expected to find out there tomorrow. But then there is that second front that moves in early Sunday. That one is going to filter in some cooler and drier air via a breezy north wind. And you can see what that cooler air mass will do to our temperatures into the start of our lot. A lot of our spring breaks early next week, upper 40s, low 50s for those morning lows. Bit chilly out there and then afternoon highs headed for about 70. That low humidity, though, that gonna is going to be, be awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mia. Well, things were extra hot, <laughs> right, with the Veterans Memorial game because, I mean, that was a nail biter and they really gave it their all. They really did give it their all and it was a nice back and forth game. Mm. And if Veterans Memorial had pulled out the dub, you'd probably say it's an instant classic. So that's what the other team is going to say, right? Hey, well, we also have Women's College of Basketball. UTSA started off cold and then they got hot at just the right time. And Veterans Memorial 5A semis went down to the wire. Coming up. That's guard Kira White moving UTSA up the Conference USA Championship bracket in big board sports. The UIL Class 4A semifinals between San Antonio Veterans Memorial and Dallas Kimball was a great back and forth contest tonight. Third quarter, Zachary Rigg using his speed to break the press and get to the hoop for a two point Vets lead. Less than 30 seconds left in the frame. Gervais Mayweathers makes a layup and Vets led 36 35 after three. Fourth quarter, Dennis Demarion driving to the hoop and dishes it to William Navarro. Nice teamwork there to keep the Patriots within two, but Dallas Kimball goes on to win 50 to 47. So both teams made 16 field goals and three three pointers apiece, but Kimball was three better at the free throw line and they are moving on. Of course, it stings a little bit. We had a couple of turnovers late, even by myself, some of these free throws. Um, like Coach uh, commented on, can't knock the effort. Uh, I mean, I wish it turned out different, but we've left it all on the floor. They did what they were supposed to do, you know, and then a couple came out. You know, we, we'd like to have another crack at it, but you just don't get that. And um, I, I think they, they held their own, and for it to uh, be a one-possession game, it speaks of their character. 
Veterans Memorial wraps up the season 36 and 5. In Class 3A state semis today, Childress beat Lytle 69 48. Lytle picked up some early fouls and Childress took advantage. The Pirates finished the season 34 and 7. The Bernie Greyhounds will take on Houston Washington Golden Eagles in the 4A state semifinals tomorrow, 3 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. This marks the Greyhounds' third straight trip to state and their sixth overall as a program. So, what does Bernie need to do to advance to the 4A championship game? We got to stick together. We got to play as a team. You know, we got to break their press. They're, they got some, some great athletes. So uh, we got to stay composed and stay true to ourselves and play our defense and get good shots on offense. Definitely stop number two. Uh, he's a pretty good shooter, pretty good player. Uh, number 11 is a, a big kid. So kind of taking them two out and making the rest of them win the game. They've got a couple of Division One players on the team. So it's a challenge, but, you know, it's what you expect when you get to the state tournament. You know, you don't expect anything else. And uh, we're up for the challenge. and, and and we're looking forward to it. And last but not least, Beaumont United and Brennan will score off tomorrow night at 7 in the Class 6A state semis. It wasn't pretty, but the UTSA women's basketball team found a way to upset Rice today to advance to the Conference USA semifinals. The Roadrunners struggled in the first half and trailed 31-19 at halftime. They made six of 30 field goal attempts, and at one point they missed 17 consecutive shots, but they regrouped during halftime and scored 15 points in the third and a season-best 28 points in the fourth to come back and stun number three, Rice 62-54. to Conference USA Player of the Year Jordan Jenkins scored 12 of her game-high 22 in that decisive fourth quarter. All year long we've had close ones, whether it's close loss or a close win. Um, we've learned how to fight through, fight through for 40 minutes and just go possession by possession and just stick it out to the end. I really think we started moving the needle uh, somewhat, I mean, a month ago. You know, you could really tell that this team was gelling, but I think today they, they found a, a version of themselves that I'm not sure they knew they had. UTSA will play number two seed Western Kentucky in the Conference USA semis tomorrow night at 7. Now the towel rack who writes about Western Kentucky athletics tweeted the Lady Tops draw literally the best draw they could possibly dream. First they played number 10 UAB. Now they get six seed UTSA. Well this has fired up some UTSA fans including head coach Jeff Trailer, who hit the RT and wrote be careful for what you wish for. Hope coach Karen and the women's team gets to see this. Keldon is happy to have Devin back after the break. The Spurs took their 2022-23 team picture at the AT&T Center today before hosting the Nuggets tomorrow night. Rookie Jeremy Sohan changed his hair to purple for the occasion. Blake Wesley, Devontae Graham, and Trey Jones were all sporting headbands, and every player was wearing the Red McCombs ribbon on their jersey to honor the Spurs' late founder. Shooting guard Devin Vassell is back with the team after missing two months to recover from a left knee procedure. He had surgery on January 11th and returned to the lineup March 2nd. Today, Keldon Johnson was asked how their games complement each other. Me and Devin are pretty close, I feel like, um, and it just carries on to the court. I feel like um, he, he's a special talent. I mean, he gets in mid-range, he can shoot the ball, he can, he can do it all. You know, the little time we had together, we definitely enjoyed it, but um, we'll be back soon. You know, he's, he's getting healthy. Um, I'm happy to see him, you know, running around and things like that, seeing the progress. So I think that um, before you know it, we both be back on the court at full, full power. And when those two are full power, the Spurs really do get going. Well, you can tell as they're getting their pictures taken, they're giggling and laughing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're very they're, close they're for sure. Yeah. Nice Thanks, to Larry. see. We'll be right back. Before we go, we want you to check out this ride. How Ooh. sweet is that, right? The color, everything. The 1962 Ferrari sold for, listen to this, $18 million. $18 million. Yeah, it's a record price for a car that was sold at the Amelia Island Classic Car Auction. Yeah, Gooding & Company auctioned the Ferrari 250 GTS WB California Spider. It's among only 37 of its kind with covered headlights. It was built for the 1962 New York International Auto Show. It's so nice. It's like that nice deep turquoise color, and it still has the original body. But $18 million? Yeah, no. I'd be That's afraid it. to drive it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'd put it in my living room. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's my new coffee table. Have a good night. <laughs>